Hello everyone, the China Math Olympiad was held a few days ago. And in this video, we'll be covering problem 4, which is an interesting combinatorics problem. Now, problem 4 may be the easiest problem on day 2, but the China Math Olympiad is known to be one of the hardest Olympiads around. So how will this turn out for problem 4? Without further ado, let us take a look at the problem. The problem statement is quite long, so I'll break it up into two parts. Uh, at a conference with n bigger than 3 scientists, some of these scientists are friends. Friendship here is a mutual relationship, so A friend with B means B friend with A. And nobody is considered a friend of himself or herself. It's further given that for any division of the scientists into two non-empty teams, there will always exist a pair of friends belonging to the same team and a pair of friends belonging to the opposite teams. I'll break this, break it down what it means uh, further on, but let us first finish the rest of the problem statement. A proposal was raised on day one of the conference and each scientist gave a score, which is a non-negative integer. Now for subsequent days, each scientist's score is changed to the floor of the average of the scores given by all of his or her friends on the previous day. So prove that eventually, there comes a day where all the scientists give identical scores. A very long statement, let's break it down what it means uh, part by part. So for the first part, it's about uh, the conditions of friendship. Now when you talk about friendship, I think naturally we want to model the situation using a graph. So let G be a graph where each scientist is a vertex and an H is drawn between two vertices if the corresponding scientists are friends. So for example, this scientist here has three friends. Okay, now let's break down what the statement means. Now firstly, I claim that G is connected and this comes from the last part of the statement because basically the statement is saying that whenever you divide uh, the vertices into two parts, right? There will always be an edge between the two parts. So if G were not connected, we can always put one connected component in one part and the other components in the other part. And then there won't be an edge between the two parts, which is contradicting the uh, second requirement here. So G is connected. Now what about the first con uh, condition that there will always exist a pair of friends belonging to the same team. Well, this actually tells us that G is not bipartite. Why is that so? Well, if G is bipartite, we can arrange the vertices into a, a bipartition, uh, the left side and right side, let's say. Then there will be no edges in the left side and no edges in the right side. And this contradicts the fact that there is a pair of friends belonging to the same team. So this tells us G is not bipartite, which is the same as basically saying that G has an odd cycle. Okay, what we really want out of these friendship uh, conditions is the following. Between any two vertices V and W, there exists a walk from V to W consisting of even number of edges. Uh, a walk basically is a sequence of uh, adjacent uh, vertices. So for example, uh, you can go from here to here to here to here to here to here, and this will be a walk. Uh, notice that I can repeat vertices that have been visited before on a walk. Okay, uh, why is this true? Well, suppose I have, uh, I mean, if I have a walk from V to W with even number of ages, I'm done. But let's say I only have a walk with an odd number of ages for a start. Then what I can do is starting from V, let me travel all the way down to the odd cycle, do the odd cycle once, go back to V, and then take the walk that I found earlier. Now, by traveling to the odd cycle and back, that contributes an even number of ages. Doing the odd cycle contributes an odd number of ages. So it switches the parity of the uh, number of ages on the walk that I found initially. Uh, so that walk plus all this additional stuff uh, additional steps will convert it into an even number of ages walk. So that's really uh, how we use the odd cycle part. Okay, so now we are done with analyzing this friendship thing. Really all we need is this part. Let's look at the real problem. So basically the real problem is saying that we have 
a score assigned to each vertex and on the subsequent day the score of a vertex is given by the uh, first you take the average of the neighbor's score and then you take the floor of that so you round down basically and you want to prove that eventually all the vertices have the same score okay so faced with this i think finding a monovariant or invariant is a natural idea it turns out that uh, we will want to consider the maximum score on each day now i claim that by looking at the sequence of maximum scores as the day passes we get a non-increasing sequence why is that so well suppose currently the maximum score is uh let's say is a right then what happens the next day if you look at a vertex firstly it looks at the average of its neighbor's score that cannot be bigger than a and then some more you round down after that so again it cannot be bigger than a so this proves that the next day's maximum score among all the vertices cannot be bigger than a so this sequence is indeed non-increasing and since the sequence is bounded below i mean at least it's bounded by zero right so this sequence must eventually become constant let's say the constant value that it becomes is uh, capital m and let's say this happens from day capital k onwards then i claim that uh, at this point capital k all the scientists actually give identical score capital m so this uh, if i can prove this i will basically prove the problem okay why is this so we'll prove this by contradiction so suppose on the contrary that there is a vertex with score strictly less than m now comes the crucial observation for the problem now from this special day onwards uh, what happens is that if i have a vertex with score less than m then on the very next day so uh, yes on the very next day all the neighbors of w must have score less than m why is that so now let us take a look at a neighbor of w it's computing its score it looks at the average of its neighbors which includes w itself and this w has a score less than m which calls the average to definitely be strictly less than m and then you round it down so it will still remain strictly less than m so that, that is really all there is to it uh, basically w has put down the score of that neighbor and there's no way the neighbor can retain uh, at a, a score of m if it was an m to begin with yeah so that's uh, the key observation and how do we use this well basically we have our vertex v here which has score less than m uh, on the day capital k right now on day k plus one the vertices reachable from v uh, by walks of length one have scores less than m these are basically the neighbors of v uh, by what the special observation is uh, all the neighbors will have score less than m note that v can very well have score equals m that that doesn't matter for this uh, statement I, I only need the neighbors for now then what happens the next day now the neighbors spread to the their neighbors uh, by the way which include v itself so now vertices reachable from v by walks of length 0 or 2 have scores less than m note that the the immediate neighbors of v right need not uh, have scores less than m i i'm not claiming that uh it has spread to uh 0 uh and 2 uh length walks so let's continue what happens after that now on day k plus 3 vertices reachable from v by walks of length 1 and 3 have scores less than m and so and so forth after a very large even number of days uh, vertices reachable from v by walks of length 0 2 4 6 and so on until 2l have scores less than m now recall that for any vertex uh, it can be reached from v by a walk consisting of even length this is what we proved in the one of the very first few statements so with a sufficiently large even number it will actually capture all the vertices in the graph so this means that at this a later day where all the vertices have score less than m but this means the maximum score is less than m which is a contradiction so this marks the end of the proof uh, it's a very interesting problem 
where you need to first use graph theory to translate the friendship conditions and then use that property as well as the idea of monovariant uh, in order to devise a proof for the solution. So next week, we'll be looking at problem five, which is a geometry problem, but it is an unconventional problem. So do subscribe, stay tuned, and see you soon.